Hi everybody, my name is Stacy Rossell and I am going to be teaching the lesson for DC this week. We are in session number seven and this session is called God Makes a Promise to Abraham and Sarah. The focus point for this week is God lovingly calls his people to a covenant relationship of faithfulness. Our key verse for this week is Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Therefore, God, uh, therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Here's your building block for this week. It's building block number seven. Don't forget that you're um, supposed to be memorizing these each week. So I would... Um, Memorize this one this week, but then go back and review the other six from the last weeks. So this week's building block is um, the mentor asks the question, what is meant by a covenant between God and his people? And the student memorizes this part. A covenant between God and his people is an agreement in which God promises his care and faithfulness as his people respond in faithful obedience. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Covenants in the Bible. So, if you've heard of a covenant before, um, there, there's quite a few of them in the Bible. Today we're going to be talking about the Abrahamic covenant. Um, but there's there's actually uh, around seven of them in the Bible. And it's sort of almost a framework in the Bible. Um, the whole Bible is kind of split up in, in times when God made promises to the people. Some of them were conditional promises. Some of them were unconditional promises. The first he made with Adam in, in the Garden of Eden um, that's called the Adamic Covenant. Um, the second is called the Noe Covenant, um, and that was where God made the promise to never flood the earth again. And his promise, um, he gave us a sign that he would keep his promise. Um, I'm sure you all know what that is. The third one on my list here is the Abrahamic Covenant. Um, that's the one we're going to be talking about today a little bit. Um, that's in Genesis 17. Uh, the land covenant is also was made with Abraham. And that was where God promised to give the land of Israel to the, Isra to the Jewish people, the Israelite people. And where are the Israelite people living today? They're living in the land of Israel. It's the land that God promised to give them. It, God keeps his promises when he when he makes a promise and the land covenant was an unconditional covenant god made the promise on his own they didn't have to they didn't have to keep it or they didn't have to do anything for him to keep it the next is the mosaic covenant which is the covenant that god made with with the the israelite people um uh, on mount sinai uh, the next one on my list here is the davidic covenant uh, this one's this one's a great one. This is where God made the promise that um, a, a king would always be on the Davidic throne. And um, down through all the generations, who was born um, of the line of David? Well, Jesus was. And he is the king that is going to come back and he's going to reign on the earth from from the throne of david and he will reign on the throne of david forever and ever and ever and the last on the list of course is the new the new covenant which is what the new testament is all about it was promised in the old testament it's in jeremiah 31 um, but it's also um, what the new testament is all about um, the old we have the old testament of the bible or the old covenant and we have the new testament of the bible or the new covenant um, that's what 
that's how our Bible is even split up, is by the Old and the New. Um, the New Covenant, obviously, is the one that Jesus made with us when he died on the cross. He fulfilled the covenants. So now we're going to dig into some scripture here about Abraham. Um, Genesis chapter 11, and we'll talk about God's promises to Abraham as well. So Genesis chapter 11, verse 31 to 12, 7. And then there's one other small section. too. Um, and, and Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife. And they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. He was pretty old. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So this is the covenant that God made with Abraham. He's saying that all the families of the earth will be blessed. And again, all down through the generations, after, after many, many thousands of years, who was born of, this, of the line of Abraham? Well, Jesus was. So God kept his promise that all the families of the earth would be blessed through Abraham. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place um, called Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moriah, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So again, the Lord made a promise to give Abram's descendants the land that Abram was on at the time. Genesis, now we're going to jump to Genesis chapter 17. Then God said to Abraham, so now his name is changed. God changed his name to Abraham. And now he's going to change the name of his wife. As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. So why do you think God changed their names? He's adding, so in the Hebrew, um, there's a letter called the He. And it's, um, it's, that's what God is adding to their names here. The H in our, in our language, or the He in the Hebrew language. And one of the, um, one of the, definitions or one of the interpretations of the hay in the Hebrew language is spirit. So what God is doing is he's adding his spirit or the Holy Spirit to Abraham, Abraham and Sarah. By adding the H, he's indicating that he's adding his spirit to them. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Abraham at the time was 99, and his wife was 90 years old. And shall, share, and shall, sorry, and shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. 
Then God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I will have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year. Then he finished talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. So God made another promise to Abraham. So questions. How did God communicate with Abraham? What promises did God make to Abraham and Sarah? What questions did Abraham have? And what was Abraham and Sarah's part of the covenant? So I would suggest that you pause now and you talk these questions over with your, uh, your family or your mentor or um, whoever's with you. All right, we will move on after you're done answering the questions. So the next little piece here is from Genesis 15. Um, then he, God, brought him, Abraham, outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he, Abraham, believed in the Lord and God accounted to him, Abraham, for righteousness. So Abraham believed the Lord's promise. The Lord promised to give Abraham descendants and Abraham believed him and God accounted that to Abraham for righteousness. So righteousness is right standing with God. It's being in right standing with God. And the New Testament concept of righteousness includes not only the, the Old Testament idea of doing what God says, but actually being like God. This is impossible since all have sinned. But we may be made righteous through Jesus. <clears throat> so when he, um, well, I'll keep going here. The Old Testament idea of righteousness, however, focuses on abs ob um, obedience and faithfulness in a relationship with God. The Old Testament does not focus on absolute righteousness or sinlessness, but on a harmonious relationship with God. Therefore, when God makes a promise and Abraham believes the promise, God credits, credits it to him as righteousness. Note, however, that God is the initiator of the righteousness, not Abraham. Not Abraham's righteousness. It's God's righteousness that's been imputed to Abraham. And it's the same in the New Testament. When we accept the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross... He imputes his righteousness. When we believe him and when we believe what he did, he imputes his righteousness to us. And they, it's said in other places in the Bible, it's, he's giving us a, a white uh, robe to wear. That's the, that's the imputed righteousness of God. He gives us his righteousness. It's just a beautiful, beautiful promise that that when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, that he get he takes our sin upon himself and we get his righteousness. It's so, so beautiful and so, so amazing. It's it's absolutely incredible that we are uh, go. We go from being filthy, dirty to being perfectly clean and white as snow when when we accept his his beautiful sacrifice for us it's just it's stunning and amazing so that's righteousness that's the righteousness from the old testament and the, as well as the righteousness from the new testament so that's what i have for you guys for this week um re, as a reminder please remember to um, study and memorize your building blocks and um, 
there's no worksheets for this week, so you don't have to do any worksheets. Um, why don't I pray? And then um, that'll be the end for this week. Father God, you are stunning and amazing and incredible. And every time I think about um, you imputing your righteousness to me and uh, you taking my sin, I just am in awe, Lord. I am so amazed by you. You are so faithful and good. Um, even though sometimes we stumble and fall, um, Abraham was not always faithful, um, but he was, but, but God, you've always been faithful. You make and you keep your promises. You are the promise keeper. And uh, we are just so, so grateful for that. Um, we thank you for sending Jesus to die for us so that we can be made clean, so that we can be washed clean from our sin. Um, and I just am so, so thankful for that. Um, for all those out there that are listening to this, I just pray, Lord, that you would bless them. I pray, Lord, that you would watch over them this week and keep them safe and protect them. And uh, just bring us back again next week. We love you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name.